All right, we are live. So this is the Speech Language Hearing Science Fall Assembly and I am hosting it along with your other fellow uh, faculty in SLHS. Uh, I'll be, we're going to do some introductions. I'm going to get us started and then we'll dive into some new information about the program and then we'll at the very end do some Q&A and some information from Nishla. So that was just jumping in. I've posted some uh, information on the Q&A board, which you should see to the right. Uh, you may have to click a little icon at the top of your screen at the right in order to look at the Q&A. Your video, uh, we can't see you or hear you, uh, but we do encourage you to have questions um, and to post those into that Q&A. We'll be able to see them and we'll post them, but no one will see them until we publish them. So don't worry about that. Um, we've got some very interesting things for you to get started with and let me do, sorry, I'm learning how to do this a little bit too. Um, so let's get started. Actually, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to jump back to myself for a second. I didn't introduce myself. So hello everyone and as everyone's coming in, this is great. Uh, my name is Dr. Marsha Walsh Aziz. I'm an assistant professor at Speech Language Hearing Sciences. Uh, I know I have some of you in class, um, but some of you may not have met me yet. Uh, I teach SLHS 1500 and uh, 4610, which is rehab audiology, and I'm currently teaching the Speech Language Pathology Assistant course. Um, this is my third year. And I'm very excited that we can still do this virtually. So uh, I'm going to uh, have our next person. I'm going to tag uh, Dr. Santhanam to introduce herself. So Dr. Santhanam, go ahead. OK, thanks, Dr. Walsh Aziz. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Shiva Priya Santhanam. Um, I am in my third year as well as an assistant professor here at the department. Um, I know you know me. Um, so welcome back to the fall semester and uh, it's an exciting semester because it's new in multiple ways. Um, a little bit of background about myself in the department. I teach um, language acquisition, 20, so that's just 2890. Um, child Language Disorders, SLHS 4510. Um, I teach Principles of Assessment and Intervention, SLHS 4500. And then I'm excited to um, be teaching a new course this semester, SLHS 490B, which is an autism peer mentoring class. Um, and welcome everyone, and I hope you have a nice evening. And uh, I'm really glad to be doing this virtually. And thanks to Dr. Walsh Aziz and um, and Shannon and uh, Katie Hunter for you know putting this all together. Welcome. All right, and now I'm going to pass it over to Dr. McGuire. Go right ahead. Okay, uh, I'm Paula McGuire, and those of you who have classes with me you know that I sometimes forget to unmute. Um, I am also an assistant professor here in the department. This is my fourth year. I teach um, clinical phonetics. That's SLHS 34, excuse me, 3540. Uh, speech and hearing science. That's SLHS 2530. And then SLHS 3580, speech sound and fluency disorders. Uh, let me add my thanks um, to Marsha and Shannon and Katie. This has been quite an effort. You've done just beautifully really excited to have this opportunity to meet everybody um, and welcome welcome back to this unusual fall uh, that we're all <laughs> working our way through i'm very glad that you're all here all right and then i'm gonna pass it over a message from shannon harris who is our uh person at the front desk, uh, our ad admin assistant, although we don't have a front desk anymore, we do have our website and she has a message here for you guys. 
um, about our website as well as some events happening on social media. So here we go, Shannon. Uh-oh. Sorry, buffering. Dr. Walsh disease, we cannot hear. Oh, I was afraid of that too. Um, let me try. How about Dr. Rossi Katz? I'm going to put you on the spot to introduce yourself and I'll figure out Shannon's video. I love being put on the spot. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome. I am Dr. Rossi Katz, the department chair of this incredible group of individuals uh, and you, the larger community of SLHS students. I'm also a professor of speech language hearing sciences and some quick math makes me realize that if you sum the total time that my dear colleagues have been faculty in SLHS, um, take the sum total of all their time, I still have them beat, I believe, in terms of how long <laughs> that I've been at MSU Denver in the SLHS department. And I'll tell you, um, it, it never gets boring. So I am thrilled to be assembling with you, albeit in this virtual way this evening. I look forward to sharing the results, at least the results to date of the survey that we collected and provide some news on what's ahead for us. So before I keep yammering on, as I've been known to do, I'll ask our producer if the video is now ready. I will give it another go. I can't promise that it has sound because I don't see the, the, um, the normal thing that I would do to make sure something has sound, but we're going to give it a try. So let me move it over to that again and see if might not have sound still, but we'll. Sound my presenters? No. OK, uh, so Shannon is saying hi. <laughs> Make sure to keep an eye out for. <laughs> the virtual get to know you posts of professors. <laughs> So keep an eye out for those posts on Get to Know You on social media. At the end of the semester, there's going to be a contest that if you know as many of the correct answers of the Get to Know You things, you can win a goodie bag from SLHS. So for a chance to win a goodie bag, pay attention to our website as well as SLHS social media on our answers to things like, if you could be an expert in anything, what would it be? Um, and other questions like that. So. Um, I'm sorry that we don't have that audio. I think this is the only video we had scheduled, so um, we'll figure that out for next time on how that can work. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to set up this with uh, Dr. Rossi Katz to go over the rest of our um, information for the court for the session. Thank you. And I, before I jump in to sharing the findings of this survey, I also want to echo thanks um, to Dr. Walsh Disease, to Shannon Harris, to Katie Hunter for putting this together. Um, and what many of you may not be aware of behind the scenes is how much other um, how many looming deadlines are happening for the SLHS department right now. And I just want to give um, a huge thank, thanks to all my colleagues. 
Um, as many of you know, and as I'll talk about soon, SLHS is in the process of getting a graduate program launched in speech language pathology, and I'll speak to that in a few moments. Um, but over the last two weeks, so in addition to all the courses and advising, um, together the SLHS department and Shannon has been there lockstep with us, keeping us on task, has submitted over 50 five zero curriculum proposals so that we can deliver a quality, incredible graduate program in the future. But in line with that, we have refreshed is just not strong enough a word. We've proposed an overhaul to our undergrad curriculum, and this will allow us to maintain the same diversity of courses, but really also bring in some exciting changes. Um, so my thanks and my gratitude um, come in so many different ways um, because I, I know uh, how much work that this team has been doing. And I thank you, our students, um, for kind of going with us on this journey. Um, things may not always um, be seamless, but I think as a community, we're approaching these new challenges with tremendous grace and a sense of support uh, for each other. And as I you know, look to uh, the community at large, there, there's uh, very uh, little else that I could ask for. So with that being said, I'll share the results of the survey that was distributed a few weeks ago. Um, the survey is still live, so if after uh, tonight's meeting you feel like you want to share uh, some additional information, I'd welcome you to do that. And after I do this, certainly we'll take time for questions as an open forum. Um, as Dr. Walsh Aziz says, already indicated, um, any questions that we don't get to or comments, we will be sure to compile those for you and share them out. Um, but I know Nishla has some important announcements that they want to get to before we move into the professional panel. So I will be brief, which for those of you who have taken classes with me and listened to four hours of video lecture, know that's no small task. Uh, the slide that preceded this one, it was a wordle and what we had posed it, the question was, what should we absolutely not change about our undergraduate program? And Shannon, in compiling the responses, you can see that those words that were used more frequently um, come across here in, in larger font. Um, and how cool if you take a moment just to see what the responses were and how much of it really is the humans, um, the faculty, the staff, the students that make up our community. Um, and we have no plans to change that. Um, I also think uh, it's important to note that the material we engage with, that we study, um, how privileged we are to be able to explore um, a profession where what our goal is, is to help connect through the power of communication. Um, and I know for myself, sometimes I, I find myself getting bogged down in details and reminding myself to take a step back and think about those um, that we serve and those that we work together alongside. Um, the other thing I'm very excited to see is that the online platform for many of you, um, although perhaps not an anticipated change six months ago, um, for the most part has been met with 
um, a lot of success. So we'll talk more about that. The next slide gives you a snapshot of who completed the survey. Um, in, in survey methodology, having 48 respondents two days ago, perhaps there's even some more that came in, um, we were quite pleased with that level of responsiveness. And as you know, uh, although you might not yet have sat in a physical classroom with us, SLHS students, um, we have kind of two different populations of students who are working with us. Um, we have our degree seeking students, students seeking a bachelor's degree in speech language hearing sciences. And we also have students who are coming to us um, having gone through a bachelor's degree and maybe they've even spent time um, away from the traditional academic setting in a job and then are returning to us before embarking on graduate study path in speech language path in speech language pathology or audiology or perhaps they're interested in the SLPA certificate. Um, so we refer to these folks as levelers, which I have come to understand from colleagues in other departments that they have no idea what that term means. So if you've heard it being used and yourself are wondering, these are our post back students who are taking undergraduate courses to level the playing field, if you will, as they move into their next step as it relates to the profession and the career. Um, majority of survey respondents were our bachelor's degree seeking students. And many of you, about half of you, um, are going to be with us through this year before you finish up your coursework. Um, some of you, I'm glad to see, will be with us for the next year or two. And then we also had some uh, respondents who are new to our program. So happy to see there being a snapshot as it relates to um, how long you've been in the program or how soon you'll be taking your next step from the program. Um, let's go ahead to the next slide. And these are going to um, indicate, so he said, what do you like best about the SLHS program? And then the complement to that, what do you like least? Um, faculty, and uh, I can appreciate having the privilege to work with the colleagues I do, um, why that is a, a like best um, answer. Again, here we see the online availability of courses. Um, uh, certainly it wasn't our expectation this time last year that all of our courses would be offered online, um, but I am pleased to see that for the most part, the transition um, is going quite well. Teaching from a real life perspective, not just a textbook, Certainly, um, it's important for us and the goals of our program that you connect what you're learning um, to individuals, to society at large. Um, and we try and do this in our coursework. I'm also going to challenge you all as a student body to think about ways that you can continue to seek out real world applications even outside of courses. And I have no doubt that Katie and the Nishla board will be excited to work with you in thinking about those opportunities. Um, and we do um, want to take time to engage, um, be it engagement through virtual community or when it will be safe that we can engage in a more face to face environment. Um, so stay tuned for additional opportunities for engagement. Um, one, however, I'll remind you of is the SLHS challenge, which Shannon um, spoke of, at least non-verbally, in the video you watched, and Dr. Walsh's ease recapped. 
but this is on about a three week cycle. New questions will appear on the SLHS's homepage, our website, and Shannon will also share those out using social media. So read those over. And at the end of the semester, there will be a test. And yes, it's comprehensive. Um, and the person who answers the um, most questions correct, again, will win a goodie bag. So we, we hope to not only show you engagement as it relates to being faculty, but the work that we do um, outside of our role in the classroom. All right, so what about some of the challenges? Um, lack of summer course options, and that has been one we've heard. Ours is a smaller department, and we're challenged in the summer to have classes that are large enough to make. Um, so there's formulas that we have to look at in terms of um, the viability of a course being offered. I'm glad uh, to see last summer, this uh, previous summer, Dr. Walsh Aziz did offer the Intro to Communication Sciences course. Uh, and certainly we will continue to explore other opportunities. Um, I'm excited to announce the possibility, although this is still some ways out. Um, some of you may know that Dr. Walsh Aziz led a study abroad trip um, in Mexico last year at the Charisma Clinic that was offered as part of a Winterum course. And current circumstances and situations will prevent us from doing that course in Winterum. Um, but Dr. Walsh Aziz has been working with the Dean's office and myself um, and the president of the university to see if we could offer that as a Maymester. So stay tuned. You will be the first to hear if there is any um, possibility of indicating that. Uh, Lack of interaction with classmates. I hear you. I think we all hear you. Um, I have not seen my colleagues in person aside from dropping off materials under, you know, the cover of darkness um, since March 13th. But who's counting, right? So, so I understand. I think the faculty at large understands. Um, and we want to do what we can to encourage that engagement, but we also want to um, take a step back and allow you as students, essential members of this community, to also figure out together what that engagement may look like and in interaction. Um, course offerings in terms of limited times, I am going to request that either as I'm talking or as uh, the meeting is wrapping up, SLHS faculty would like you to put some information in the Q&A box. And here's what we would like. If there are two days, two weekdays, that you would prefer synchronous meetings to happen, we want you to put what two days they are. So your first preference in terms of a weekday and then your second preference in terms of a weekday. And then you can put this all in one response. What time of day is your preference? And we could say kind of four options. So before 10 a.m., midday, which we could say is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., mid to late afternoon, we'll call that 2 to 5 p.m., and then after 5 p.m. So my request to you all, all of those who are watching, and ask your classmates um, to also email the SLHS MSU Denver email um, with the same information so that we can compile it. And I'll repeat that. What are your top two weekdays for priority scheduling of live meetings? And then what time of day, if I were to divide it into before 10 a.m., 10 to 2, 
two to five and five or later. I know having uh, been in this role for quite some time, there is no time that we're, we'll work for all students. Um, but we are committed to looking at your responses and making decisions that are driven by your preference. Um, so I, I can tell you there will not be a magical time that works for all, but no, we will continue to solicit your advice uh, and we'll take it into consideration when we make course schedules. The majority of courses next term will continue to be offered in the virtual online environment. Um, I can speak for myself and I am quite confident in speaking for my colleagues in saying the work we're putting into these courses um, has been tremendous and we want to continue to see them develop. Um, and campus at large is still going to be operating remotely. So again, majority of SLHS classes will also be offered virtually, but we will certainly be thoughtful and informed in terms of when and if we offer those live meetings. And to that same point, I appreciate that in a virtual environment, it might be kind of especially apparent how faculty differ in terms of course organization. I think when we're face to face, that's perhaps a little less apparent. I am committed to encouraging faculty to teach in a way that they think best informs the subject matter they are teaching. And as a community, we are all fortunate to have faculty who are committed and dedicated to best teaching practices. Um, so I don't think having everything be identical across classes is necessarily the best thing. Uh, as you all know, um, the personalities between professors differ. Uh, for those of you going on in the field, you'll work with clinical supervisors who you almost think you're working in a different field based on how those clinical supervisors want things done. So my commitment is to ensuring that our courses are accessible to all, um, but within that, you know, looking at it from the perspective of embracing different approaches um, and challenging ourselves with a growth mindset to figure out how to be successful. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, what can we do? More accessibility, I spoke to that. More classes with TAs. We're fortunate to have two TAs that are working with us this semester, and we were able to hire them as part of a grant the university received. Um, what I would also like to put out there for those who are listening is we are in need of tutors, speech language hearing science tutors, especially for some of our lower division coursework, um, which includes our 2000 level language acquisition and speech and hearing science. If you're interested in learning more about this, if you've completed those classes and completed them um, with strong standing, please email me and I'll be happy to give you more information. And then patience and understanding. Um, I, I agree as a community and a world at large, um, the, the approach that we take in terms of how we face challenges, um, we as a faculty are there with you and look forward to working with you in this respect. Next is what you as students can do, and I am not going to answer that. I'm going to save um, this conversation for one that you can have with your student peers, the Nishla board. Um, we also have two students who have been elected to the student board of health ambassadors. 
know that there are students who are working in leadership positions who are very um, open and excited in developing this community. Um, and as much as possible, encouraging each other rather than competing with each other, um, we are behind that as a faculty and staff. Um, we're with you and look forward to hearing and learning from you and your ideas. And then I think the last slide, um, how can we help with your connection? Um, the first one there, hire more faculty. I, I can tell you from an administrative standpoint, I, I would love to do that. We are challenged by hiring freezes. Um, faculty and staff um, at the university have had to take uh, measures to assist with um, budget reductions. I can tell you though that with the launch of a graduate program, because the funding mechanisms are different, we are looking to hire more faculty. Um, and staff positions. And the first position we'd be hiring for would be a director of clinical education who would have responsibilities in both the undergrad and grad programs. So stay tuned, more information on that. And I'll also be recruiting some students to sit on this individual's hiring committee. So another opportunity for a connection. Um, Connecting with real life odds and SLPs will in a matter of 28 minutes, which means I have to wrap up, you will get that opportunity. And so I'm excited to hear um, how that panel goes. Meet and greets for sure. We have some ideas about what those will look like, including more socially geared ones. Um, as we approach uh, thinking about next semester, I'll be holding a group based advising session that you can pop into and ask questions. So there will be some faculty led meet and greets and I also look to our student leaders to um, help us organize some additional ones. My last two things are just to again kind of circle back, give you some updates on the program. Um, exciting things happening with the undergrad program. Um, and these are all things that I think as a as a group you can get very excited for. Um, one is to um, change up kind of our senior experience class. Certainly this is not going into effect this year, so please, if you're going, oh, I'm taking that next semester, this, um, as many things in academia, will take time. Um, but we're looking to move our principles of assessment and intervention into a standalone course that will also be required of leveling students. And in that course, we'll give you the opportunity to complete all 25 of your observation hours. Hopefully soon enough, those can be done um, face to face, but certainly until then, we were able to secure access to Master Clinician Network. So we have heard you as students say, I am not getting enough observation hours, and this is our way of addressing that concern. This also means that we open ourselves up to some unique experiences for those of you who require a senior experience, those degree seeking students. So we're looking to make our SLPA class have senior experience designation, as well as opening up a class that would allow you to count activities like the research that many of you do with Dr. Santhanam would be considered under that umbrella of senior experience. So stay tuned, more information about that. Uh, I'll be launching next year a three credit neural basis of communication and its disorders. So my one credit class will be um, going away, but it will be supersized into a essentially communication neuroscience course, which many of you are telling us is being required um, for graduate study. 
an even more uh, uh, upcoming short term, Dr. Welsh Aziz will launch her Foundations of Disability Studies through media this spring. So Dr. Santana mentioned peer mentoring class. Dr. McGuire has been working on the speech science and phonetics and speech sound disorder coursework. Um, exciting changes for that. Graduate program, we submitted our application to the Council of Accreditation, our professional body, on July 30th. The due date was August 1st, so we were ahead of the game. As I said to some of you, they cashed our check, which means they're reviewing our proposal, and we'll get our first round of reviews is anticipated in October. Um, it's always strange when I'm sitting in my basement to say all things going according to plan, but all things going according to plan, we would launch our program in summer of 2022. That would mean that we would start looking for applications to be accepted likely around December of 2021. So we can't say much more about that given that it isn't formally approved and accredited yet, but I uh, assure you much work has been done even within the last 48 hours among the SLHS faculty and staff to continue our drive to meet your need for a graduate program and a graduate program that will allow you to meet the requirements to be a certified clinician in speech language pathology, as well as have the option to have a concentration in bilingual service provision. So that's all from me, seven minutes over. Marcia did not give me the virtual, but I thank you all um, and my colleagues are here. I know Katie Hunter has some announcements and we still have a little bit of time, I'm glad to say, before we transition to the panel. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Rossi Katz. Um, uh, Katie, I have your slide ready to go here. Uh, we don't currently have any questions in the uh, in the Q&A, so I think we'll just go ahead and go over to Katie. Feel free to add questions, though, to that Q&A, and if there's time, we can still address them. Um, but Katie, you're up. Alrighty, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Hunter, and I'm the 2020-2021 president of the National Student Speech, Language, and Hearing Association, or NISHLA for short. For those of you who don't know who, what, what NISHA is, we're a national student organization for those studying communication sciences and disorders. Membership provides benefits that help you as SLHS students stay uh, current on advancements in the field, enhance your knowledge, find volunteer work or internships, and network with students with similar interests. And it looks great on your academic resume. Now I know you're dying to know the answer to the question. How do I join Nishla? It's easy. You can send an email, email to me at khunt16 at MSU Denver. Oh no. We may have lost connection or I lost connection. Sorry about that. Uh, any of my other my presenters? Is it me or is it Katie? <laughs> No, I think Katie's screen is frozen. OK. Uh, well, moving. I think you're back now, Katie. Yeah. Oh, but we can't hear you. Technical difficulties. Can you hear me now? Yes, there you are. Yeah. There you are. OK, all right, I'm back. OK. All right. So uh, you can join Nishla through emailing me or messaging us through one of our social media pages, Facebook or Instagram is where you can find us, or you can join through the Nishla page on Roadrunner link, which you can find through scrolling through your student hub and clicking on the student organization tab. Uh, membership for one semester is only $5. Membership for one year is 10, and that is such a good steal for all the opportunities that we're able to provide for you. Everything is online this year, but that doesn't stop us from offering really exciting events. Some of the events that we have planned are the Letter of Intent Night for October 14th, 
We're also planning an Autism Goes to College movie screening along with Dr. Santhanum in the Access Center on the 15th. We also have a telehealth and a pandemic panel that isn't quite exactly um, set in stone yet, but to be announced. We also offer monthly meetings where you can relax, hang out with your peers, and further your passion in speech, language, and hearing sciences. And another perk, NISHLA members can purchase and wear these stylish t-shirts, and they're very cool. Lastly, these are our board members. Reach out to any one of us and join NISHLA today. That's all I had. <laughs> Alrighty. You're muted, Marcia. Haha. <laughs> I am not muted anymore. Um, okay, so no, there weren't any other questions posted on the Q&A. Um, we thank you for attending. This was great to have, there was about 20 of you most of the time, so that was great to have that many. And uh, remember to reach out to your peers and tell them that if they weren't here, let your uh, preferences be known on when you'd like to see classes being held synchronously, and we will do our best to make that happen. So. Thank you again for everyone in the department and we will see you in class.